everyone. Welcome back to Get Your Play Online. Tonight, my name is Julia and we're going to be reading Frozen. And I have my friend Olaf here with us tonight too to read the book. So I am so excited to be here with you to read Frozen, which is a chapter book tonight. So first we're gonna check out the cover of the book. It is a special edition and it's a junior novel. And we're also going to check out the inside cover of a book because inside covers of books have lots of helpful information. So looking at the inside of Frozen, looks like it has a lot of information about what this chapter book is going to be about. So let's take a look. If you've never seen Frozen before, this would be a great place to find some information about what our book's going to be about. It says, Once Upon a Time. Anna and Elsa were royal sisters growing up in the faraway northern kingdom of Arendelle. As young girls, the princesses were close, especially because Elsa shared a secret with her little sister. Elsa had a magical ability to pull ice and snow from the air and turn them into wonderful creations. But while they played one night, Elsa's magic accidentally injured Anna. Afraid for both girls, the king and queen decided to limit Elsa's contact with the world. Looks like there's more information about what Frozen's going to be about on the back of the book. So let's flip and see what the back says too. Fearless optimist Anna sets off on an epic journey to find her sister, Queen Elsa, whose icy powers have trapped the kingdom of Arendelle in eternal winter. So if you haven't seen Frozen, or even if you have seen Frozen and you really loved it, we are going to be reading the chapter book of Frozen tonight, and we will see how much of it we're able to get through tonight. So let's see. We've snuggled up with Olaf. Okay. And we are flipping to the first page of our book. Let's see, it starts with a prologue. So the prologue is the very beginning of the book. It has sort of a backstory to how the book is starting. It says, Long ago, atop a mountain high above the kingdom of Arendelle, a group of strong men were hard at work. They were ice harvesters, men who cut and hauled huge blocks of ice from the mountain lakes. Horses stood at attention, waiting with empty wagons to be filled. The ice blocks were hoisted into the wagons. Soon they would be taken down to the village to sell. It was a dangerous business. One slip could send a block hurtling down the mountainside, or even worse, falling on a man and crushing him. A boy stood in the shadows watching the workmen. He kept a small sled at his side. His name was Kristoff, and he desperately wanted to join the ice harvesters, but he was too young. Standing next to him was his friend Sven, a baby reindeer. Kristoff imagined the two of them taking a sled full of ice blocks into the village of Arendelle. Sven sniffed the cold air and glanced at the big blocks of ice. They looked very heavy. He snorted but didn't move a hoof. As evening approached, Kristoff finally convinced Sven to carry a small load of ice on their sled. By now, the men had lit several lanterns and were finishing loading their own wagons. Kristoff crept forward and was able to grab a small block of ice. He finally wrestled the block onto his sled and attached Sven's harness. Wagon by wagon, the ice harvesters head down the mountain roads. Kristoff trailed behind with Sven, steering his own small wagon down the bumpy path. Above them all, the northern light spread across the dark sky, creating waves of gossamer green light. The magical glow pulsed as it rolled over the mountains down toward the kingdom below. Now we're going to move on to chapter one. If you have this book at home, you could read along, or if you don't, you could just listen to. All right, chapter one. In a grassy valley next to a deep fjord, the castle of Arendelle lay silent in the night. The bright luster of the northern lights danced across the windows, waking a small girl. She sat up and grinned to see the wonderful green light. 
the girl jumped out of bed and tiptoed across the room to wake her older sister. Elsa, Elsa, she said urgently, wake up. Elsa, who was eight years old, grumbled and ducked under the covers. Anna, go back to sleep. But Anna wouldn't give up. I just can't. The sky's awake, so I'm awake, and so we have to play, she said. Do you want to build a snowman? Elsa's eyes popped open. That got her attention. The girls were the daughters of Arendelle's king and queen, and the best of friends. Elsa couldn't resist Anna's begging. The sisters ran down the hallway in their nightgowns, laughing as they hurried along. Entering the great hall where all the royal balls were held, they turned to each other. Are you ready? Elsa asked, smiling. Yes, yes, Anna cried, reaching out to tickle her sister. Elsa giggled, and suddenly Snowflake seemed to burst in a flurry from her hands. Anna clapped happily. She knew that her sister had a very special talent. She could create snow and ice, even in the middle of summer. With a twirl and a wave of her hands, Elsa magically summoned her ice powers. Quickly, she filled the great hall with mounds of fluffy snow, turning it into a winter playground. Then she stomped her feet, and ice swept across the floor. She laughed to see little Anna hopping around joyfully. Together, they went to work building their snowman. Anna did her best to roll out the snowman's body. Then she ran to get a carrot for the gnomes. Snowman, she exclaimed proudly. Elsa laughed at the lopsided snowman. Hi, I'm Olaf, she said in a deep voice, pretending to be Olaf, and I like warm hugs. Just like Olaf, we give him warm hugs. Alrighty. The girls danced around their funny snowman. Then Elsa gathered her icy magic and made a swooping ice slide. Anna squealed with delight. She climbed to the top of the slide, then zoomed down and soared up again along the icy curve. Elsa quickly created another slide to catch Anna as she came down. The little girl gained speed and was tossed upward again. Elsa had to work fast to keep pace with Anna. She kept making more slides so her sister would sail off as she flew around the room. Anna, slow down, said Elsa, starting to get worried. It's too high. But Anna was having fun. The little princess was fearless, jumping and sliding to each new slide as quickly as Elsa made it. Elsa raised her hand to create the next slide, but suddenly her foot slipped. As she stumbled, her magic went awry. Her frozen blast caught the side of Anna's head right through her curls. Anna gasped and fell to the ground unconscious. Anna, Elsa shouted, running to her sister. She lifted Anna up and felt her cold, shivering body. A lock of Anna's hair had turned pure white where the magic had hit her. Mama, Papa, Elsa cried desperately. As she called for help, her worry increased. Icicles formed on the ceiling and frozen spikes grew tall around the girls. The king and queen burst into the great hall to find their daughters huddled in a frozen landscape. They knew that Elsa had a special ability to create ice, but this was more than they'd ever seen. Elsa, the king cried, this is getting out of hand. I'm sorry, Elsa replied in distress. I didn't mean it. Anna, the queen gasped and ran toward her little girl. Now we're going to move on to chapter two. The castle's library was dark, but the king knew what he was looking for, an ancient book filled with knowledge from centuries past. When he found it, he pulled it from the shelf and quickly flipped through the pages to the section he needed. In it was a drawing of a troll, which seemed to be holding the northern lights in his hands. In the front of the troll, a wounded human lay quietly while the troll used the magic of the northern lights to heal him. The king turned the page and spotted a crumbling document tucked into the book. He carefully unfolded the yellowed map. Wasting no time, the king and queen threw on their cloaks, bundled up their daughters, and ordered that the horses be saddled. The royal family hurried away from the castle. The queen traveled on her own horse with Elsa, while the king held Anna in his arms. The horses thundered up the mountain path. Kristoff and Sven were walking down the rocky mountain path under the bright glow of the northern lights, but as the rumble of hoofs filled the air, they moved aside, wary of the approaching horses. They watched the riders gallop past, 
leaving a trail of ice behind them. Curious, Kristoff and Sven followed the travelers to a ridge above a mountain valley. The two hid behind a rock and watched as the horses whinnied and came to a stop. The king and queen dismounted. The king held a girl, the young girl to his shoulder. The queen held the hand of the slightly older girl. Please help, the king cried out, my daughter. The hillside appeared empty at first. Then a pile of rocks rolled down the hillside. Suddenly the rocks unfolded themselves into legs and arms and stood up, revealing themselves to be small gray creatures. They weren't rocks at all. Trolls, Kristoff whispered to Sven. At that moment, a rock next to Kristoff jumped up, turning into a short troll woman covered with moss. Her name was Hulda. Shush, Hulda told Kristoff absently. I'm trying to listen. Then, startled, Hulda looked more closely at Kristoff, realizing for the first time that he was not a troll. Her face broke into a grin, and she reached out to give Kristoff and Sven big hugs. Cuties, she said, laughing. In the valley, the king stood with his daughters as Pavi, a very old troll, made his way through the crowd to gaze at the princesses. First, he looked at Elsa. Was she born with the powers or cursed, he asked. Born, the king answered, and they're getting stronger. The troll then turned his attention to Anna, who was still unconscious. You are lucky it wasn't her heart that was struck, he noted. The heart is not so easily changed but the head can be persuaded. He paused. We should remove all magic, even memories of magic, to be safe. The king nodded. Do what you must, he said. With a gentle touch of his fingers, the troll pulled a series of glowing memories from little Anna's head. The memories hovered in the air as the troll transformed them into more sensible scenes. Instead of a magical snowman in a ballroom, Anna would now remember a winter scene in the courtyard. Instead of snowflakes in the hallway, she would remember snowflakes falling outside the window. All the magical moments she had shared with Elsa were gone, replaced with normal moments. The only remnant of her magical accident was the streak of white in her hair. There, said Pabby when he was finished. She will remember the fun, but not the magic. She won't remember that I have powers, Elsa asked. No, Pabby said. It's for the best, the king told her. Listen to me, Elsa, Pabby said. Your power will only grow. There is beauty in it, but also great danger. As he spoke, the troll conjured up an image of an older Elsa in the sky. The image twirled gracefully, surrounded by beautiful snowflakes. Then, amid the northern lights, the snowflakes turned into sharp spikes. The specter of a crowd joined Elsa in the sky. The people used the icy spikes as weapons, attacking Elsa's glowing effigy. You must learn to control your power, Pavi continued. Fear will be your enemy. The king held Elsa close. We'll protect her, he promised. We'll lock the gates. We'll reduce the staff and keep her powers hidden from everyone, including Anna. Now we're going to read chapter 3. Back at the castle, the king and queen immediately ordered that the gates be locked. All the doors were closed and the windows shuttered. They kept the girls secluded and no longer opened the castle to visitors. The family stayed hidden, tucked away inside their walled kingdom. The king and queen acted just as cautiously inside the castle. As the princesses grew, their parents did everything to ensure that Elsa learned to control herself. That meant the girls were hardly ever together. Nor did Elsa seek Anna out, since she was afraid she might accidentally hurt her. Day after day, Elsa spent most of her time training to be the next ruler and learning to keep her powers in check. The training was difficult, and Elsa often felt unable to contain her magic. Ice seemed to form on her fingertips whenever she laughed or cried or became upset. Worried, the king gave Elsa a pair of leather gloves. He advised her to keep them on at all times and reminded her that she had to hide her icy magic in order to stay safe. Conceal it, he told her. Don't feel it, she answered. Don't let it show, he agreed. The years slipped by. Anna spent most of her time alone. Sometimes she played with her dolls. 
Sometimes she pretended to have conversations with painted portraits in the gallery. But she was lonely. Time after time, she knocked on Elsa's door, pleading with her sister to come out and play. But Elsa never did. The memory of their friendship was slowly fading. One day, Anna peered out the window and saw snow falling in the royal gardens. She raced down the hallway to her sister's room. Do you want to build a snowman? She called through the door. There was no reply from outside. The door did not open. Eventually, Anna went out into the courtyard and tried to build a snowman herself. After rolling out a lopsided ball, she glanced up at Elsa's window and thought she saw someone smiling down at her. But when she looked again, the face was gone. Without any memory of Elsa's magic, Anna had no idea why she was always alone. Over time, she simply came to accept that her sister's coldness was part of who she was. She didn't know that Elsa was lonely too, and that she missed Anna as much as Anna missed her. Elsa longed to play with Anna, but was fearful of the harm her magic might cause by mistake. I'm scared, Elsa told her father one day. It's getting stronger. Getting upset only makes it worse, cautioned the king. Calm down. He reached out to give Elsa a hug. No, she said sharply, don't touch me. One day, years later, when both the girls were teenagers, the king and queen boarded a ship, intending to visit another kingdom. They hugged their daughters goodbye and left them at home, as they had many times before. But this time, the king and queen never returned. A storm engulfed the ship, and they were lost at sea. The kingdom mourned their rulers. Inside the castle, Anna felt overcome with grief. Not knowing where else to turn, she knocked again on Elsa's door. Elsa, are you okay? I'm right out here, Anna said. But as always, there was no reply. She slid down and sadly rested her head against the door. It's just you and me now. What are we going to do? Inside her room, Elsa felt awful too. But she could not open the door. Instead, she sat with her back against the closed door, crying silently. All around her, ice and snow filled the room. In time, the girls became young ladies, but they had grown apart, and Anna felt she barely knew Elsa anymore. When Elsa turned 21, it was time for her to be crowned the new Queen of Arendelle. The whole kingdom was bustling with excitement. For the first time in ages, and for one day only, the castle gates would be open to the village and to all the surrounding kingdoms. It would be a celebration that Arendelle would never forget. Chapter 4 On the morning of Elsa's coronation, the heavy gates to the castle were finally opened. All of Arendelle wanted to celebrate the grand occasion. The streets in front of the castle were crowded with townspeople eager to see the new queen. To add to the excitement, the fjord was filled with ships from other kingdoms, bringing dignitaries from far away. One by one, important people stepped on to Arendelle's docks. Welcome to our humble Arendelle, the royal handler called out to the visitors. One of the visiting dignitaries was the Duke of Wesselton, a small man with white whiskers. Two huge guards followed close behind him, carrying his luggage. Ah, Arendelle, our most mysterious trade partner, the Duke said breezily. Open these gates so I might unlock your secrets and exploit your riches. In the distance, Kristoff was making his way down a mountain path. Now grown up and strong, he and Sven have become true ice harvesters, masters at hauling ice blocks down the mountain. To Kristoff, the coronation was a perfect opportunity to sell ice to the crowds who filled Arendelle. Coronation on a hot July day, you know what that means, he asked Sven, who was harnessed to their rickety ice cart. The reindeer raised his eyebrows. Sven couldn't talk, but that wasn't a problem for Kristoff. He often spoke for Sven, changing his voice to sound deeper and more reindeery. I sure do, Kristoff, he declared. As Sven, by noon, I'm going to smell like a barrel of rabid skunks. Yes, you will, Kristoff said, talking normally again. He grinned, but also... People will be needing ice. Lots of ice. He pulled Sven's rope and the two continued down into the town. For Anna, the new people and the excitement were a dream come true. 
For the first time in years, every door in Arendelle was open. No one was shutting her out. She burst through the busy courtyard in front of the castle and practically skipped into town. People everywhere were getting ready for the coronation. She saw banners, a maypole, and flowers all celebrating her sister, the new queen. There were dancing groups, musical bands, and food stalls. Everything looked so interesting. I can't wait to meet everyone, Elsa exclaimed out loud. Then she stopped short as a thought occurred to her. What if I meet the one? Anna knew she wasn't likely to meet someone special, especially since the castle gates would only be open for one day only, exactly 24 hours. Still, she couldn't help daydreaming a bit. Today might be her only chance to meet new friends, have new experiences, and maybe, just maybe, find love. In her room upstairs in the castle, Elsa did not share the happiness that pulsed through the kingdom. She worried about controlling her powers and hoped she could just get through the ceremony without anyone learning about her magic. As a test, she slipped off her gloves and picked up a candlestick and a little jar from the table. She concentrated, holding both with her bare hands. Be the good girl, Elsa whispered to herself. Make one wrong move and everyone will know. She was nervous. As she stood there, ice formed on her palms and moved up onto the objects, turning them into ice. She hurriedly dropped them and tugged her gloves back on, concealing her hands and her icy magic. It's only for today, Elsa reminded herself. After that, the gates would be closed again and she could go back in time. Now on chapter five. In the streets below, Anna was strolling dreamily around the harbor, watching the ships and imagining all the fun the coronation party would bring. For once, it wouldn't matter that Elsa didn't want to spend time with her because she'd be spending time with everyone else. Anna rounded a quarter and suddenly, smack, a horse bumped into her. Caught by surprise, Anna lost her balance and stumbled, falling into a small rowboat on the dock. The boat tipped precariously toward the water. Luckily, a horse came forward and placed its hoof on the end of the boat to keep it from sliding into the harbor. Hey, Anna exclaimed in surprise, looking up at the horse and its rider. I'm so sorry, the rider said. Are you hurt? Anna tried to regain her composure Hey, uh, no, I'm okay, she managed to say. She couldn't help but notice that the rider was very handsome. Are you sure? The young man asked. He hopped off his horse. He was tall and sharply dressed in a fancy uniform. He looked very concerned about her welfare. Yeah, I just wasn't looking where I was going, Anna said. She smiled, but I'm great, actually. Oh, thank goodness, the stranger said, smiling. He stepped into the little boat and extended his hand to Anna. When their eyes met, a happy charge of excitement passed between them. The young man smiled. Prince Hans of the Southern Isles, he said, introducing himself. Anna stood up and curtsied. Princess Anna of Arendelle, she replied. Princess, he responded, horrified. My lady. He dropped to one knee and bowed his head. The horse also dropped to one knee. Immediately, the little boat tipped backward and Hans tumbled on top of Anna. They both giggled awkwardly. Hi again, Anna said. The prince's face was just inches from hers. Apparently realizing his mistake, the horse slammed its hoof back down on the boat. Anna and Hans fell the opposite way. This time, Anna landed on top of Hans. Oh boy, Hans said, embarrassed. Ha, this is awkward, Anna said, acknowledging their position. Not that you're awkward, she said, trying to cover her embarrassment, but just because we're... I'm awkward, she said. You're gorgeous. Her hand flew to her mouth. Had she just said that out loud? Wait, what? Hans jumped to his feet, regaining a royal posture. I'd like to formally apologize for hitting the princess of Arendelle with my horse. And for every moment after, he added. No, no, Anna said. It's fine. I'm not that princess. I mean, if you'd hit my sister Elsa, this would be... She paused for a moment. Yeesh, because, you know... Anna patted the horse, trying to recover her rambling thoughts. Hello, she said to the horse. She turned back to Hans and offered him a princess grin. But lucky for you, it's just me. Just you, Hans asked. A warm smile spread across his face. 
Anna couldn't help smiling back. All of a sudden, the castle bells began to peal. The bells, she cried, the coronation. I better go, she said. She hopped off the boat back onto the pier and waved. Uh, bye. Hans waved back. Even the horse waved, lifting his hoof off the boat for a moment. Unfortunately, that caused the boat's weight to shift again. Oh no, Hans said. The boat flipped off the dock and Hans fell into the water with a splash. Lifting the boat off his head, Hans peeked out from the water and watched Anna run through the streets toward the castle. He grinned as he thought about his wonderful chance meeting with the beautiful princess. Soon the people of Arendelle, along with dignitaries from around the land, were making their way into the royal church for Elsa's coronation. Kristoff, however, was far away, in a corner of the town. He had sold all his ice and was now busy bargaining for a brand new sled. Watch this then, Kristoff called, as he played around with the sled's special features, which allowed it to switch between runners and wheels. It's a sled. It's a wagon. It's a sled. It's a wagon. The sled salesman looked concerned, as if he was wondering what kind of person would talk to a reindeer. But he wanted to finish the sale. He tried to make small talk as they completed their deal. You sticking around to see the queen and the princess? He asked Kristoff. Are you kidding? Kristoff replied. I've got a brand new sled with wheels. He grinned. I'm hitting the road. Suit yourself, the man said, but I bet they're beautiful. Kristoff didn't even hear the man. He and Sven were already headed back to the mountains with their new sled. We're now going to read chapter six, and I think this might be our last chapter for tonight. The cathedral was packed with people as the coronation ceremony began. An orchestra played and a choir sang while the royal procession walked down the very long center aisle. The bishop led the way, followed by Elsa, looking regal and serious, and finally Anna, holding the train of Elsa's dress. At the altar, Elsa and Anna faced the bishop. Near him lay a silver platter holding the royal crown, scepter, and orb. Looking over her shoulder, Anna spotted the princess, the handsome Prince Hans. He sat straight and tall, and a stranger was asleep on his shoulder. Hans waved at Anna, who giggled. The bishop placed the crown on Elsa's head. Then he turned for the scepter and orb and presented them to Elsa. She reached for the items, but he cleared his throat. Ahem, your gloves, your majesty. Elsa took a sharp breath. If she took off the gloves, she might accidentally let out her icy magic. She hesitated, growing pale with worry. Anna took that moment to look over at Hans and smile at him. She couldn't wait to talk to him at the ball. Elsa slowly removed her gloves and face, placed them on the satin pillow. With a deep breath, she took the orb and scepter in her hands. She turned to face the crowd. As the undoubted queen, protector of this dominion, he intoned, keeper of the doctrine and government thereof from this day forward, I present to you her majesty. Elsa's eyes widened as the scepter and orb began to freeze in her hands. She tried desperately to control her emotions. She was just so nervous. Queen Elsa of Arendelle, he, de he finished his decree. The people rose. Queen Elsa of Arendelle, they echoed. Elsa quickly placed the orb and scepter back on the silver tray and grabbed her gloves. With a sigh of relief, she realized that no one had seen the ice on the orb or scepter. She smiled at the cheering crowd. She had made it through the ceremony. Later at the coronation ball, Elsa and Anna stood side by side in a long receiving line at the entrance to the great hall. Elsa felt relaxed, almost content now that the most difficult part of the coronation day was over. Festive music filled the air as guests danced across the ball, the floor of the lavishly decorated ballroom. You look beautiful, Elsa said to Anna. Thank you, Anna said in surprise. A smile spread across her face. Her sister had actually spoken to her. You look beautiful, -er, Anna replied. Then she realized how strange that had sounded and blurted out an explanation. Not that you're fuller. No, just more beautiful. Elsa grinned. Thank you. Then she looked out at the crowded ballroom. So this is what a party looks like. Anna nodded. It's warmer than I thought. All the people, I guess, Elsa said. And what is that amazing smell? Both of them caught a whiff of a sweet aroma wafting across the room. 
chocolate, they exclaimed at the same time. Then they looked at each other and started laughing. Anna could hardly believe that Elsa was treating her so kindly. She was about to say more to her sister, but just then a guest stepped up to be presented to the new queen and the princess. The Duke of Weaseltown, a royal attendant announced. Weselton, the Duke corrected him. Then he bowed his head. As your closest partner in trade, it seems only fitting that I offer you your first dance as queen. Elsa stiffened and clasped her gloved hands together. Thank you, she said, but I don't dance. The Duke looked offended, so Elsa quickly nudged Anna forward. But my sister is a marvelous dancer. Anna was a little startled, but she allowed the Duke to lead her to the dance floor. Unfortunately, the Duke was a horrible dancer. He couldn't seem to take one step without crushing Anna's toes. As he bobbed up and down, his toupee bounced back and forth on his head, and he never stopped talking. Bumpy bump bop, look at me, he crowed. This certainly makes for being shut out for twelve years for no reason. Do you know the reason? he asked Anna. No? Well, watch this. Like a chicken with the face of a monkey, I fly. Anna cringed as the Duke danced around her like a dying peacock. Then she caught sight of Elsa watching from the side of the room, barely able to keep from laughing. Anna shot Elsa a number of help me looks, but there was no way out of it. She was forced to finish the dance, much to Elsa's amusement. After the dance, Anna limped back to Elsa. Well, he was sprightly, said the queen with a smile. Especially for a man in heels, Anna replied. Both sisters giggled. Are you all right? Elsa asked more gently. Anna smiled. I've never been better, she said, glancing into Elsa's eyes. This is so nice. I wish it could be like this all the time. Me too, Elsa said wistfully. Then she caught herself and stiffened. But it can't. Why not? Anna asked, surprised at Elsa's sudden change of attitude. Elsa tensed. Because it can't, she said firmly. Anna felt all her old disappointment rushing back. Excuse me, she said. Elsa watched sadly as Anna walked away. All right, friends, that is it for our story for tonight. We will pick up back at chapter seven. If you would like to hear the rest of the book, you can join me back in two weeks, not next Monday, but the Monday after that here at Get Your Play Online. If you would like to read the rest of Frozen, we'll be reading more in two weeks. I hope you have a super great night, and I will see you very soon. Good night.